I thought that I was doing something like emotionally safe, you know, where I really wasn't dealing with people's suffering. They were bringing us their animals, and this was all going to be a happy thing. Well, I realized very quickly that it weighed on me heavily that I was taking these people's, some people's family members, you know, in there. And some of them, their very last possession, and they let me know it um, oh, when yeah. I was there, you know, and then, you know, I mean, and I wasn't there for every animal to come in, but, oh boy, did I know that this was, these things were special sure. to people. So, but what we saw a lot was, you know, we saw a lot of responsible pet owners that, that bus I described was a veterinarian, um, people who had checked their animals in for boarding at that veterinarian oh. and evacuated, and he was getting his animals out of a place where there was no electricity and no ventilation and, you know, and no consistent, you know, because of the National Guard closing off the areas. So these people, veterinarians were very responsible. So, so, and then neighbors would bring, rescue their neighbors' animals and bring them to us. So they were owned, but we, they, we didn't know where the owners were. So often these owners would come and they were looking for their animals. And I just remember, um, we had, you know, all these different television stations in. And one day we had a lot of television cameras in there. And they all, of course, wanted to interview me and I wouldn't let them. I was like, this is not about me um, at all. I, I, I don't think there's any footage of me doing this. There's some photos that the Ag Center took of me, but there's no footage because I was like, this is not about me. This is about the animals, this is about the volunteers, and this is about the owners. And this is not about me. It was, I just happened to be able to coordinate something big and I'm, I happen to be decent at it. So, um, I remember I was standing there and the uh, guy with the movie camera, he only had a little bit of film left and, I mean like two minutes or less than that. And this woman, Joanne, I'll never forget her name, um, was looking for her uh, teacup poodle. And we had just reorganized the, um, the rows of these crates, you know, we had bands going, so it was like kind of, you know, it's chaotic in there, but everything was organized. So they were looking for the number that were coordinated from the database, you know, the dog, and they were going up and down to those volunteers. And I was like, You're, we're going to find your dog. We have it in the database. It is here. We haven't given it to anybody else. So this volunteer that was uh, a volunteer extraordinaire, I, uh, she was just absolutely wonderful. Well, she found this, this dog, this teacup poodle. And the dog, she came up and she was holding the dog. The dog was calm. The dog saw this woman, Joanne, and went absolutely bananas. And this woman, Joanne, had an ample bosom. And the dog came up and was literally crawling across her chest and licking her face uh -huh. and then coming around her shoulders and literally just doing circles around this lady's head and licking uh -huh. the face and everything. And this guy with this camera, he was like... I don't care what else I have to film today, I'm going to film this. And it was awesome. It was, um, and I thought, this is why I'm doing yep, this. It was this reunion, yes. you know, this, um, yes. of this lady, Joanne, binding her teacup poodle, little white dog. Oh, I love it. It brings tears to my eyes to think about how awesome it is. Yep. Oh, look at, I'm not, <laughs> it's an awesome story.